This video is about my process for taking a CMYK file, converting it to RGB in Adobe Illustrator, and then I sent it off to Finerworks for printing. And I'll show you how the prints came out. I did an earlier video and you'll find the link in the description for this video with tips for editing art. I started out with birthday card art that I had originally done in CMYK. And what I wanted to do was convert this to RGB and then do some editing, take out the birthday elements, take out the shark and make this into a print that would stand on its own. So the first thing you need to do is take the original file, the CMYK file and make a copy of it. To do this, go up to the file menu and choose save a copy. From there, decide where you want to keep it on your system and it will have the word copy in the name. And then once you've saved that on your system, you'll need to go back to the file menu and open that file. So here now I have both of those files open. This is the copy here and we can see it's in CMYK. Now I want to convert this CMYK document to RGB because that's the color space that Finerworks is asking me to send the file in. To do this, I'm going to go up to the file menu and down to document color mode and then change this to RGB. So I'm only changing it on this copy and that way I leave the original in its CMYK format. Now, if I zoom in, you can definitely see the shifts in color. I'll go to the original here and zoom in. And as you would expect, the CMYK version is a little more dull and the RGB version is a little bit more saturated but still not quite where I want it. Now, one thing I want to point out is that if you're ever confused about which is which, you can always go up to the tab where the file name is and just see here in this parentheses that this is the RGB document. We're looking at it in preview mode, of course. And over here is the CMYK document that we're looking at in preview mode also. All right, so I'll go back to the RGB document and to make the final art, which we can see right here in the middle, this is another RGB document, and this is the final edited art. It's actually more saturated, brighter. It's a little bit more what I wanted it to be. And to get to this place, I made edits to the art that I showed in my earlier video, and I made some color changes. But before you make any color changes, make sure that you have your document color settings the way that you want them for the final export. So in this case, I'm going to be exporting this art with an Adobe RGB color profile. Now you can choose either the Adobe RGB color profile or the sRGB color profile. I checked on their website and saw that Finerworks accepts either color profile. I got good results with the Adobe RGB, but I'm also going to try sRGB at some point. Now the color settings for Adobe Illustrator are up here in the edit menu and down here at color settings. And in this panel, you can see my current working spaces are set for RGB and CMYK. So we're really only concerned with RGB. Right now I've got Adobe RGB. If you wanted to change this to sRGB, you can do that right here, but I'm going to leave it this way. So when you convert your file to RGB, it's good to have your working space set. And this is going to be the profile that you want to use when you export for finer works in the end. So it's good to set this up before you make changes to the color. All right, I'll just cancel because I like my settings as they are. So some of the color changes I made were just to go in and select individual colors like the background gradient color stops and just adjust and change those individually. But other changes I made were global changes to the color overall. So a tool that's really helpful to make global changes is the Astute Graphics Phantasm plugin. So I'm going to go up to my workspaces and get that out by going to my Astute Graphics workspace. And here's the plugin right here, Phantasm. So what you can do is select part of your art or all of your art, it's really up to what you want to make adjustments to. But as you see, you have all these sliders here that you can work with. So it's kind of like making Photoshop style adjustments. 
to your color in Illustrator. So this is pretty amazing. So if I go ahead, I'm going to select all of the fish art and then all of the reef art here. And I'm just holding shift and clicking in the little space on the right hand side of the layers panel to select all of that art. So with all of that art selected, then I can go over to this hue, saturation, and lightness, and I can decide I want to saturate it a little bit more by pulling up this slider here. And it takes just a minute because it's a big adjustment to a lot of complex art here. And then if I want to lighten it or darken it, I can use this slider here. And you can see these changes start to happen. There are temperature controls and other things that you can do here. Now I'll just click an empty space to deselect so we can see those changes better. So I'm actually adjusting the file that I'd already adjusted the way I like it. So these are not exactly the changes I would make now, but I want to show you how you can further adjust from here. So what I need to do is go into my appearance panel and I'm going to need to select those same things again so I can actually see them here. So I'm going to my fish friends layer and we can see there is one of the adjustments there. And then I'll go to the reef layer. I'm holding shift so I can select that as well. And so now I'm seeing all of that. And so here is my hue saturation adjustment. I can preview what this looks like by clicking on the visibility icon here to turn it off. And by the way, if you don't want to see all this path highlighting, you can go up to the view menu and down to hide edges right here. The shortcut is command or control H. All right, so this makes it a little easier to actually see the art and evaluate this. Let me turn on the visibility so we can see the change that I made here. And it's applied as an effect in the appearance panel. So that makes it easy to just click on the link here and I get a panel where I can edit this effect. And I have to bring the panel in because it opened on my other monitor. But here are all those settings that I created. And let's say I made it a little too dark. So I can just lighten it up using the slider and see that change happen. And there are many other settings I can play with. For now, I'm just going to click OK and close the appearance panel and close the phantasm panel. And that was just a quick introduction to what you can do with phantasm. And now to export the TIFF, I'm going to go up to the file menu and choose export, export as. And then in the export window, I want to choose under format TIFF. And then definitely check use artboards. I set up this document with an eight by 10 inch artboard so that it would crop to exactly the size I needed it for finer works. And then click export. And here under TIFF options, we've got RGB 300 PPI resolution. And then there's our Adobe RGB profile. And click OK. And right now Illustrator is telling me I'm going to overwrite that, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to click cancel. But you would go ahead and continue with that. Now over in Finer Works, I'll show you the file that I uploaded. You'll just use their uploader once you create an account. And here is my TIFF. And then you just click on the Create Print button to create your print. And I chose two different fine art paper prints. One is their standard archival mat. And then the other is satin luster paper. And I'll show you how both of those turned out. So here we're looking at the luster paper and you can see that little bit of grain. It's like photo paper and it has just a nice satin finish to it. And this is the mat, which holds the detail really well. It's super crisp and the color is great. It's very much like what I saw on screen. The white balance is a little off in this video in my studio, but here's another shot where you can see them in outdoor light. But overall, I'm really happy with these prints. It certainly helps that I have my monitor already calibrated, but Finer Works also offers a color calibration print, and I haven't used this myself, but I might try it out in the future. So I hope you've gotten some good color tips from this video. This has been kind of a fun experiment for me. So be sure to like and subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more YouTube videos on working at Illustrator and other Adobe apps.
My name is Laura Coyle. Thank you for watching.